Hello, my name is Johnny X. Flakes III, the pastor of the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church. Here at 4th Street, we do what we do for the love of God through Jesus the Christ. We are Bible-based, Christ-centered, and Holy Spirit-led, and mission-bound. We are very grateful, and we are so pleased that you have been led to join us this day. Our hope, our prayers are that you will find this message helpful for your continued spiritual growth in the will, the way, and the word of God. God bless you, God keep you as our prayer. 
Welcome to our worship experience. Good morning, church family. These are your church announcements for Sunday, May 15th, 2021. Young Adults Block Party, postponed due to inclement weather. New date and time to be announced. FSNBC Summer Camp will be held June 1st to July 30th. From 8.30 a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m., breakfast and lunch will be provided. Ages from 5 to 12 years old. The cost will be $99 per week. Fees. $49 activity fee and $25 registration fee. Activities, Freedom Academy reading and math lessons, STEM-based lessons, art, and much, much more. Point of contact, Sister Jackie Flakes. Virtual Vacation Bible School will be Monday, June 7th through Friday, June 11th. Registration now open. Registration forms available. Forestry.org, the church office, or by point of contact, Sister Deborah G. COP classes will be held May 28th through May 29th. All upcoming COP classes will be virtual, free to all FSNBC members. Registration link can be found at forestry.org. Contact Sister Mary Strouser Weaver for additional information. Scholarship opportunity. Aspiring Christians in Healthcare Scholarship, open to four street Baptist Church members only. Students must attend to major in the healthcare field. Visit fourstreet.org or contact the church office for an application. The deadline will be on Sunday, June 6th. Scholarship Opportunity, Nellie Melson Bridges Memorial Scholarship, open to four street Baptist Church members only, must be currently enrolled in an accredited college or university. Point of contact, Sister Carolyn Bridges Graves. Causes to celebrate. Congratulations to Sister Mary Dowdell for 50 years of employment at Piedmont Columbus Regional Hospital. Happy birthday to all members born in the month of May. And congratulations to all new parents and grandparents. Weekly Bible study. D Deep Sea Fishing, Sundays at 5 o'clock p.m. Spiritual Brunch, Mondays at 11 o'clock a.m. Engaging Asking, Wednesdays at 6 o'clock p.m. except for Wednesday. Joined by Zoom video, phone conference, or Facebook Live. Church School Classes, Spiritual Transformational Classes at 9.30 a.m. via Zoom. Christian Family Class, Training for Service and Discipleship. Intermediate class, men and women's class, women's class, men's class, young adult class, and primary class. Youth Ministry presents virtual children's class at 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock p.m. On first and third Mondays, Youth Advisors Bible Stories. And in second and fourth Mondays, Physical Fitness with Youth Officers. Contact Sister Sharana Porter for more information. Upcoming events. Sunday, May 23rd, Pentecost and Annual Pick'em Day. Also, 28th Annual Memorial Day. Solidarity and In Gathering Day at 10.45 a.m. Monday, May 31st, Memorial Day. On Saturday, June 5th, Prayer and Meditation Hour at 8 o'clock a.m. And Pastor's Cabinet at 9.30 a.m. Sunday, June 6th, Communion Sunday at 7.45 and 10.45 a.m. Sympathy is extended to Deacon Judson G. and family for the passing of his cousin, Derek Herring. Sympathy is also extended to Sister Joanne Zerang and family for the passing of her aunt, Willie May Lowe. Prayer list. Please keep these members in your thoughts and in your prayers. At this time, we would like to acknowledge our guests who are joining us via Facebook Live or on YouTube. We're glad that you have joined us today and hope that you will be led to join us again. Have a great Sunday. Invitation to Discipleship. 
If you are interested in accepting the invitation to discipleship, please contact the church following service today. You may contact the church at 706-324-2055 or email at 4 Street NBC at gmail.com. Tithing Alternatives Mail check to P.O. Box 1591, Columbus, Georgia 31901. Finance drop box located inside the educational building. Giveify. Access online via 4th Street app or 4thstreet.org. Connect through virtual worship. Live stream 4thStreet.org, Facebook, and YouTube at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. Radio 104.9, WFXE FM at 8 o'clock a.m. Television, WRBL, TV Channel 3 at 8.30 a.m. Mobile app, 4th Street app. As a reminder, church office hours are at 10 o'clock a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m., Monday through Friday, and on Saturdays at 9 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. If you have any information for the weekly announcements, view the email address to the church office by 4 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday. Thank you for tuning in, and have a great week. Hello, my name is Johnny X. Blakes III. I am pastor of the Fourth Street Missionary Baptist Church, and I'm excited to invite you on this family cruise. It's our first virtual vacation Bible school starting at 6 o'clock p.m. You must go on our Facebook, go to our website, and register, and we are launching out on a family cruise together. There are classes for children. There are classes for uh, teenagers, young adults, middle-agers, golden ages. You don't want to miss this cruise. Sign up today. Miss G, Larry, what do you have to say? Come, on, come join us on, us on the cruise. cruise. All right, come join us on the cruise. So, guess they have to catch me next Sunday. No, you can still give. Huh? Yeah. How? Through Givelify. Givela what? Givelify. Givela who? Givelify. How am I do that? Do you have a phone with you? Go to your app store and download Givelify. How do you spell that? G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Uh -huh. okay. okay. Look at your church, 4th Street. Find the amount you want to give. Okay. Tap. Give. Done. That's it? That's it. Just that easy. Just that easy. Girl, I just gave a five. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you just did that. <laughs> Hello, my name is Johnny X. Flakes III, pastor of the Fourth Street Missionary Baptist Church. We are excited about returning back to the Lord's house. We welcome you at both worship experiences again at 7.45 a.m., 10.45 a.m. on the corner of 3rd Avenue and 5th Street in the historic district. We again welcome you. We anticipate your return. God bless you. God keep you. Is our If you are able, will you stand to your feet, please, for our call to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth forever. I was glad when they said unto me, 
let us go into the house of the Lord. So while we are here, let us worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen. amen. This is our call to worship. Amen, 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 amen. We'd like to welcome all of you for our in-person worship and those are live streaming Facebook or whichever way. We are just delighted to have you join in with us on this morning. Now for the devotion, Article of Faith. We believe that the scriptures teach that in order to be saved, sinners must be regenerated or born again. That regeneration consists in a giving a holy disposition to the mind that is ineffective in a manner above our comprehension by the power of the Holy Spirit in connection with divine truth so as to secure our voluntary obedience to the gospel and that its proper evidence appears in holy fruits and repentance and faith and newness of life. Good morning. Please join with me in reciting our church covenant. Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, we do now, in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyful in into the covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinance, discipline, and doctrine to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of this ministry and the friends of the church and the relief of the poor and to spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to regularly educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindness and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealing, faithful in our engagement, and exemplar in our deportment and to avoid all tolerant, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and the use of intoxicating drink as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts and to advance in the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and the feelings and courtesy and speech, to be the slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, and the mindful of the rules of our Savior, to secure it without delay. We more of engage that when we are removed from this place, we will soon as possible, you put unite from some other church, where we can carry out the spirit of the covenant and the principles of God's word. And now unto him who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, be the power, the glory forever, Amen. Okay, if you have your hymn in front of you, hey, please uplift your voice with me. You go to 380, leaning on his everlasting arm. 380.
up our hearts and our minds as we pray together. O Lord, our Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place yes, yes. for all generations. Ups and downs of life, but yet we are still here to look at each other across this sanctuary. We just thank you, Lord, for our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our nose to inhale the oxygen, our mouths to praise you this morning, yes. because we have always leaned on the everlasting arms, whether we knew it or not. Thank you, Jesus. And so we just want to give you thanks. Thank you. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would indwell us today, and we thank you for your presence. Thank you, Through Lord. the singing, the preaching, the fellowship. Yes, yes. We lift you up now in the name of him who died that we might live. Thank God. Let all of God's people say amen. 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 You may amen. be seated. Today, we are going to discuss the characteristics of a Christian. Our scripture comes from John, the 13th chapter, the 34th through the 35th verse. It reads, A new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Today, I have a few pictures of some animals, and as they pop up on the screen, I want you to think about what makes each animal unique. Morning. Here's Morning. a picture of a bird. What is your first one? Some things that make a bird unique may be that they fly, or that they even sleep. Here's a picture of a cheetah. Some things that make a cheetah unique are that they are fast runners, and they are great hunters. Here's a picture of a peacock. A peacock's feathers and their beautiful colors are a couple things that make a peacock unique. These are all characteristics of animals. This morning, I want to ask you about Christians. What are some characteristics of Christians? Jesus answered this question for the disciples in John, the 13th chapter, the 34th through the 35th verse. Jesus tells us that his followers should be known for their love for one another. People should be able to look at you and me and know that we are Christians because of the love that we show for each other. What are some ways that we can show love for each other? Jesus calls us to love all people. He wants us to love not only our friends, but also people we don't know or even people who may not like us. What are some ways we can show love for people we don't know and even people who may not like us? Some ways may be caring for the poor or even praying for those who are mean to you. Those are all great ideas. Let's pray that God will help us to love all people today. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for this day, and thank you for another opportunity to show love for one another. Lord, we ask that you help and guide us so that we know how to love people that we may not even know or that may be mean to us. Bless the church family and bless all of our loved ones. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
something special, supernatural about your name, Jesus. Something happens when I mention. Something happens. I, I don't know about you, but 
How many have called on the name of Jesus? Some may have called on him early in the morning. Some may have called him in the noonday. Some may have called him late at night. Some may have called him we in the morning hours, but when you call on the name of Jesus, something happens. I can't tell you what happens for you, but I can sure tell you what happens for me. When I call on the name of Jesus, there's a peace that rushes my soul that surpasses all understanding. When I call on the name of Jesus, he makes everything all right. When I call on the name of Jesus, he reminds me that I'm not walking by myself. How many can call on the name of Jesus? How many don't mind calling on the name of Jesus right now at this time? Why don't you just take a moment and call on him? Maybe you didn't call on him last night. Maybe you didn't call on him this morning, but why don't you take a chance right now and call on the name of Jesus while you're in worship? We're worshiping the name of Jesus. Where every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess that the name of Jesus. Anybody in the house today? Anybody in the streaming live congregation? Don't mind calling on the name of Jesus. Come on, let's worship. Young people, you can call on him when you're in the classroom. You can call on him on the college campus. You can call on him. Young adults, you can call on him. And ladies, you can call on him. stand to your feet if you're able if you're able if you're able as we journey to the throne of God to call on the name of Jesus with bowed heads and lifted up hearts Lord we come calling on your name in the name of Jesus for we know that you hear our cry. You hear your children's voice. You incline your ear to those who have been covered by the blood of Jesus. Who declare that Jesus the Christ is their Lord and their Savior. And they identify themselves as the redeemed of the Lord. And because we are the redeemed of the Lord, we cry out and we shout out, Jesus. 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 And we come, O oh Heavenly Father, thanking you for loving us enough to send your only begotten Son to atone for our sins, to forgive us of our sins, to provide us eternal life to rescue us from the power and to, wreck us, to rescue us from one day the presence of sin and for that we say hallelujah we celebrate in the name of Jesus we come Lord thanking you for allowing us to wake up this morning allowing us a brand new day allowing us to be clothed in our right minds allowing us to put one foot before another allowing us oh heavenly father to make it to the lord's house one more time to lift up the name of jesus to praise and to worship 
in the name of Jesus Lord we thank you for those high school graduates we thank you for those college graduates we thank you for allowing them to meet a milestone to accomplish what they set out to do but let them know it was not in their own intelligence it was not in their own strength but it was in the name of Jesus somebody prayed for them somebody prayed that Jesus would continue to guide and to cover them so we come celebrating those who graduated during this month of doing last weekend this weekend we thank you for their parents thank you for their support systems that continue to encourage them along the way we celebrate you we praise you and Lord we come thanking you for those who've been married and are celebrating 51 years of marriage and 37 years of marriage like uh, sister Lois and brother uh, Williams 57 years of marriage and Jackie McCall and Deacon McCall celebrating 37 years in this institution called marriage that you designed and you established and so many others who have traveled in this holy matrimony we thank you for sustaining them and providing for them down through the years that you may be glorified that you may be seen through this relationship called marriage where you bring two imperfect people together to demonstrate your power, to demonstrate your presence, to demonstrate your unconditional love, to demonstrate your loving kindness and your forgiveness and your mercy. We thank you for those who continue on this journey. And Lord, we thank you for those who trust you who depend upon you even singles that are continuing to travel the single season being patient enough to allow you to send who you want them to have because you know exactly what they need so we thank you for their commitment and their devotion in their season of singleness now, Lord, we pray that you will bless relationships all across this nation. Bless those who've had loved ones to be transitioned by death. Bless them with patience and bless them with comfort and peace. We pray your blessings upon those, Lord, who are struggling for whatever reason. They will come to know you as their Lord and Savior. That you're the only one that can provide them peace in their struggling, stressful situation. They will come to know you as their Savior and Lord. Bless now those in hospitals and nursing homes and ICUs and CCUs bless them with restoration of health and strength those who are coming out of operation procedures and that are home sick and shut in we thank you for nurses who provide compassion and care to those who are in need in hospitals and nursing homes and other facilities. We thank you for nurses who you have set aside to provide care. Bless their homes, bless their families. Bless husband and wives. Bless our children, grandchildren. Bless now, as only you know how. And bless your church, which Jesus is the head. Send us who you want us to have, and send us what we need. In the name of Jesus. 
bless now. Have mercy on us. Forgive us of our sins. If we said or done anything to displease you, we pray that you will forgive us, Lord. We pray, oh Heavenly Father, that we will turn more towards you in the name of Jesus. Bless this worship. Bless the message that will go forward. That it will not land in thorns and thistles stony ground along the wayside but it will penetrate someone's mind and heart and compel them to come to believe in Jesus the Christ it's in the precious and glorious name of Jesus we lift this prayer up to you this is your servant's prayer let every heart and mind say amen amen and amen many know that you can take everything to God in prayer how many know you can take everything to God in prayer let me just ask it one more time how many know you can take everything to God in prayer how many in the streaming live congregation know that you can take everything to God in prayer not some things 
but everything to God in prayer. That's how we know we, we, we don't have to, 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 to experience um, this, 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 this pain that it talks about. Needless pain we bear. All because we do not care. Everything to God in prayer. It's, it's, it's good to be reminded and choir thank, thank you for reminding us through song that we can take everything to God in prayer. I want to ask if you would please turn with me to Exodus chapter 17. We want to focus our attention on verses 9 through 13. We want to look at this narrative of this occurrence in this text. This is Pickham Sunday, but it's also Pentecost Sunday. Pickham is Partners in Christ Caring Ministry. So we have this core ministry that focus us on relationship one to another. But also, today is to remind us that the Holy Spirit is here. You don't have to pray for him to come. You don't have to ask for a fresh anointing. You don't have to usher him in. in. He came over 2,000 years ago. Amen. And so we just have to trust. We have exactly who Jesus prayed that we will have as believers in Jesus the Christ. So let us go to this Old Testament passage of scripture. And uh, we want to look at chapter 17, starting with verse number 9. And we will conclude our reading at verse number 13. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version, and it reads, So Moses said to Joshua, Choose for us men, and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him, and fought with Amalek. While Moses, Aaron, and her went up to the top of the hill, when Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, while Aaron and her held up his hands. One on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the sword. Amen. And I want to use as a sermon title, I want to tag the text, Perseverance. Perseverance. As you remember on last Sunday, I said that I want to do a series of sermons on perseverance. This is the second of the sermons that we will be preaching and teaching on. Sermon number two, perseverance. But I want to remind us of what perseverance is. Perseverance is the continuation of commitment through action in spite of struggles, in spite of difficulties, and even failures. It is also the ability to overcome the repetitiveness of problems from difficult situations. And my brothers and sisters, the Bible gives us some excellent advice as we would expect as believers as to how we can persevere when difficulty and hard times come. 
And I just want to stop by this morning and tell you that difficult and hard times will come. They don't need a GPS. They just know how to find your address. Nobody have to tell them. They will just come and they'll show up and they'll stay a while. God's desire is that we would run the race of faith fervently, faithfully, and to finish the course. So come close, live streaming congregation, those of you who are in the pew. Come close. Let us look at the occurrence in Moses' life in order to gather some direction as to how we can better persevere in our own lives. Are you interested? Come close. Listen again to our text. Exodus chapter 17, verse 9 through 13. Just, just listen. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose men for us and go out. Fight Amalek. Tomorrow I will station myself on the top of the hill and with the staff of God in my hand. Joshua did as Moses told him and fought against Amalek and Moses Aaron and her went up to the top of the hill so it came about when Moses held his hand up that Israel prevailed and when he let his hand down Amalek prevailed but Moses hands were heavy then they took a stone and put under him and he sat on it and Aaron and Ur supported his hands one on one side and one on the other thus his hands were steady until the sun set so Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. My brothers and sisters in the streaming live congregation, you here in the pew, for whatever reason, Moses understood from the Lord that as long as he held his staff above his head, the Israelites would prevail in victory over the Amalekites. Moses understood that. But if Moses' strength would give out, causing the staff to fall below his head, then the Amalekites would suddenly prevail. Clearly, Moses had a challenge before him, one which would require an incredible amount of endurance. It is no easy task to keep our arms raised over our heads. Even for a matter of minutes for some people, let alone for hours upon hours, and with the weight of a staff. But Moses finished the job. And there is much to learn from just how he was able to finish the job. So let us focus. Let us look at this closer. And I want to emphasize uh, two points. Emphasis number one. We can learn perseverance is only possible by the strength which God supplies. Come close. Perseverance 
is only possible by the strength which God supplies. And I know, I know, I know for secular minded, human minded persons, uh, there are those who teach, those that has, has taught, that in hard and stressful times, you and I are to believe in ourselves. You are to believe in yourselves. That is a common theme throughout society. And to just try harder, dig deeper, and somehow, by mustering some extra something from within, keep on going. Has anybody been influenced or anybody have heard that kind of teaching? Maybe you've taught it. Maybe you've said it. I don't know. However, the fact of the matter is that victory in spiritual per per perseverance and in staying strong spiritually is not found, don't miss this, within ourselves. And I know that that's a hard paradigm shift for some people. That's a hard rethinking because we have been bombarded, we have been influenced, we have been taught from little children. Believe in yourself. As if we ourselves, in and of ourselves, are strong. Now I know for those who may be unsaved or those who may be spiritually immature, this makes no sense. But I'm going to ask you to just stay with us for just a little while. Prayerfully the Holy Spirit will convict somebody, will shift some paradigm, will crystallize what we're being taught through this occurrence with Moses come close because Jesus taught something too in Matthew 26 verse 41 Jesus taught the flesh the flesh that is our humanness is weak I know when men and women of the 21st century hear that they close down just like that because they believe something that's weak is flawed or they won't they have nothing to do with it but Jesus says the flesh is weak but Christ in us empowered by the Holy Spirit makes us strong who, who's the us those who are believers those who are regenerated baptized in Jesus the Christ it is through him, enabled by the Holy Spirit, not through our own human willpower, that we are able to please him and do his will. That's why a lot of us, you know, you ask graduates today when they graduate uh, or when they're applying for scholarships, one of the questions that's asked, what is your favorite scripture? What is your favorite Bible verse? And I've seen a lot that quote this as their favorite Bible verse. And it's a great quote. It's a really a very good one. Philippians 4.13. Have y'all heard it? Maybe you've said that's your favorite Bible verse too. Philippians 4.13. Which teaches, Paul says, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Now, let me just see if we can just crystallize what Paul was really saying because I think some people don't have a clue what he was saying. They think it just has to do with spiritual, with just physical strength. That's not what Paul was saying. Listen at this translation. He says, here it is, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength to persevere. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength to endure. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength to be patient. Come on close. 
I got one more for you. I can do all things through Christ who gives me contentment. It is Christ by way of his Holy Spirit that enables you who happen to be a believer in Jesus the Christ, regenerated, empowered by the Holy Spirit, to do what you could not humanly do. Let me just say to our college students, let's just say to our young adults, middle agers, let me just say to you, just because you are intelligent, that's not yours. Just because you matriculated through high school, just because you matriculated and you are matriculating through, through college, you need to recognize it's not yours. It all belong to Christ. He is the one that enables you. He is the one that enables me to be able to do what we cannot do in and of ourselves. Let me just go ahead and do a real test right quick. I'm going to move on. Can I just ask, stop breathing just for five seconds. Just stop breathing. Next time you go swimming, Try and breathe under the water. In Exodus chapter 17, God wanted to demonstrate the lesson of finding strength and winning the victory through God's strength in this battle with the Amalekites. It was not the staff. It was the obedience of Moses to raise the staff. The staff was only representative of God's power. It was only the obedience of Moses that God showed his power as long as he did exactly what God told him to do. God was making it crystal clear to Israel that he was the only hope of their winning. Come on, y'all got to come on close. The reason that some people are jacked up in their relationships and the reason that they find themselves feeling defeated is because maybe, just maybe, they're out of step with the will of God. Otherwise, what would a man holding a staff over his head have to do with winning a battle fought with brute strength and man-made weapons? God wanted Moses to understand as well as the children of Israel and Joshua who would take them into the promised land. You can do nothing without me. It is my power, not yours. It's my might, not yours. That even makes it possible for your victory for your strength. So come close. The point that God wanted to impress upon Israel and to us today is that it is by his strength that spiritual victories are won. What spiritual victories are we challenged with? Sin, temptation, insecurities, inferiority complexes. The spiritual spirit of giving up, throwing in the towel, the spirit of pride, thinking I'm all of that in a bag of chips and can't nobody do it without me. I'm the only one that's the sharper or the sharpest tool in the drawer, pride. Without his provision, without his protection, Blessing and favor, we have no hope of advancing the gospel. And oh, my brothers and sisters, that is the purpose for why he set us aside in the first place. It's not just to keep us from going to hell. It's for our light to shine so that others may see his good works, his strength, his power within us. 
we have no hope of growing in faith and perseverance. We'll quit every time things get tough. When hardships come, difficult times come, we'll find ourselves. If it's not quitting physically, there's a lot of times we quit mentally, spiritually. We withdraw. We don't want to have nothing to do with the church anymore. Don't want to have nothing to do with y'all folk. No more. Y'all too messy. And I don't like being around messy people. Without understanding God can take messy stuff and turn it into his miracle. Not yours. We're all messy. That's why we have the church, which is Jesus body which he is the head we come sick but we come to the one who's a great physician so I just come by to tell us faith in God through Jesus Christ empowered by the Holy Spirit and his word is the means to victory over all that we are challenged with. That's why Jesus says, I've overcome the world. Be of good cheer. Because you, those of you who are in Christ, has also overcome. Whatever obstacle, whatever difficulty, whatever challenge that you may face in this life. And let me just go ahead and say this to you all because I'll repeat it again because it's worth repeating. God never brings you through something just for you primarily. Let me say it one more time. God never brings you through a challenge, a struggle, a hardship, a situation primarily just for you then why would he bring us through so that you can be a blessing to somebody else that if he brings you through and they have a love trust to be in relationship with God through Jesus Christ don't you know you become the walking testament of how his power his presence his strength is shown through you that's why I have problems with people who say, I don't want to testify. You don't understand when he says, let your light so shine so that the world will see his work, his light through you. It's not your light, it's his light. You do know the moon don't have light in and of itself, don't you? The reason the moon can shine so brightly at night is because of the sun. The reason your life was shine so bright is because you have the S-O-N shining through you. He gives you the strength to endure. So as Israel was instructed through this very visible object lesson, which is emphasis number one, perseverance is only possible by the strength which God supplies. But here's emphasis number two, and I'm going to be, well, almost there, okay? <laughs> Come close. Here's instance number two. As Israel was instructed through this very visible object lesson, here's what God wanted Moses to understand. It was in weakness. God makes strong. Come on, 21st century women. Come on, 21st century men. Come on, strong-minded men and women. It's in weakness. God makes strong. This is one of the greatest paradoxes in the Bible that many, even Christians, don't understand because we have been so influenced by be strong, be strong, be strong, be strong in yourself. Military don't help very much, does it? Athletics don't help very much, does it? Because what it teaches is be strong. I remember I had a coach in a part of one of our players. He had a broke leg and the coach said, be strong, suck it up. Go out there and go. I said, like, what? Yeah, yeah. 
Y'all heard coaches like that, you know, got to be strong, you know, show that you are tough, tough. But let me just say something. Sometimes in order for us to learn this lesson of dependence, yes, I'm saying dependence, which is a bad word in this secular, humanistic, independent society in which we live. He wants to teach us a lesson of dependence upon the Lord. And this is for how he does it. Sometimes God must remove, don't miss it, all of the things which we thought made us strong so that we see our weakness and watch his strength be perfected in and through our weakness. Sometimes he'll help, he will allow you to fail a class that you thought you were the best in to show you that you ain't all of that in a bag of chips. Sometimes he'll allow you to get sick and you can't even get up off your bed to let you know that when you had your strength, you took it for granted. Sometimes you allow some things between a husband and a wife to let you know that maybe y'all have actually put each other on a God level. Come on, somebody. And not realize that it was the God that brought you together who said, let no man, no woman put asunder. Is there anybody in this house? Sometimes he has to allow some things to happen to let us know I need thee. Oh, I need thee every day, every hour. Sometimes you have to allow some things in our children's lives to bring them to a point of humility to let them know you ain't all of that. Just because you're young, I can snatch you out of here. Go to the cemetery. They got short graves, medium-sized graves, long graves. Look at the dates. Sometimes God has to allow some things, to remove some things, to let you know that you need to depend on him. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verses 9 through 10, listen to what Paul writes under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It is powerful. Paul says, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, it says, but he, referencing Jesus by way of the Holy Spirit, said to me, Paul referencing himself, pointing to himself, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness. Let me just go ahead and ask you, when the last time you've heard somebody be glad in their weakness? When is the last time you've heard anybody brag about their weakness? Paul says, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness because Paul understood it was in his weakness. He had to acknowledge he was weak. In order for Christ's power may rest on him. And oh, my brothers and sisters, he continues to say that is why for Christ's sake, not for his sake, not for anybody else's sake. Another translation says for Christ's reputation in God. I tell you, his reputation will not be slandered. It would not. It will not be scandalized. It's by his name's sake. I delight in weaknesses. And in insults and in hardships and persecution and difficulties. And this is what he concludes with in this verse 10. He says, For when I am weak, then I am strong. Paul had come to realize that it was in his weakness, God will show his strength, his perseverance, his power. I just come by to ask you. Have you truly come by way of the Holy Spirit to embrace this paradox? Or are you still under influence? I guess got to be strong. I got to be strong when I'm 
grieving the loss of a loved one, the death of a loved one. I got to be strong. I just got diagnosed with an illness. I got to be strong. I got to be strong for everybody. When Jesus says, be weak. I know that's a challenge because we've all been raised to be strong in ourselves. But when you're born again, Paul says, be not conformed to the way of the world. Thinking like the world would be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Which means we don't think like the world thinks. That's why it's so important to read your Bible. It's not just read it, but pray that the Holy Spirit will change the way I think. Cleanse my thoughts. That I will think more highly. I will think more spiritual. And not be mundane. Just human. Because we are spiritual beings in these human bodies. There will be times, my brothers and sisters, when our strength will fail us. Your strength will fail you. And no amount of digging deeper into ourselves will be able to get us through the predicament we face. Severe illness, crisis, disability, near-death experiences all reminds us of our frailty and our feeble nature. These hard, stressful, difficult times. And let me just say this because this word is not going to play well with some of y'all. It's not going to play well. See, what I'm preaching and teaching really goes against the way the world thinks. And that's why it'll sound crazy. And I just ask you to examine, are you thinking more secularly? Are you thinking more worldly? Are you thinking, of mo thinking more humanly in terms of the humanism? Or are you truly thinking under the sound and the guidance and the power and the strength, the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit? Listen to what it says. These hard, stressful, difficult times are valuable. How many of you all count your hard times and your stressful times, your challenging times as valuable? Young people, young adults, middle ages, golden ages, how many of you count your hard times, your stressful times, your difficult times are valuable in that they cause us to call out to God for strength which we come to recognize we don't have. And this strength we come to experience only he can provide. How many count your difficult times, your challenges times, your crisis as valuable? So why trust in our own strength when we have God on our side whose strength is without deficiency or limitation come close there are times Christ will use others to supply his strength to us don't miss that sometimes we will experience God through Jesus the Christ empowered by the Holy Spirit giving us strength to do his will that we know it is not of ourselves. There's no way we could have made it through certain crises and difficulties and challenges in our relationships, in our homes, or in our jobs, or in our physical health declining. It's no way that we could have made it in our own strength. But other times, my brothers and sisters, God might work through saved sanctified disciples to encourage us to continue on come close and that such was the case in this victory over the Amalekites he provided Aaron and her there to assist to help to support to lift up the arms of Moses but such is like partners in Christ's caring ministry. To be there. To encourage members. To connect with one another. As we walk through this journey. 
That we don't have to feel as though we're alone. Don't have to feel as though that we're going through this by ourselves. Partners in Christ caring ministry. For our young people, for our young adults, our middle ages, our golden ages. To be there, to come alongside, to develop relationships. Cultivate and nurture relationships. To celebrate promotions, to celebrate graduations. We celebrate together, but when we hurt, we come alongside. We hurt with you. We bleed with you. To let you know that we are in this together. Brother Moore has a, uh, a, 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 a saying that I think is very appropriate. Whenever he does something and I say thank you, he says, it's all for the team, sir. All for the team. All for the team. All for the team. All for the team. When we persevere, it's all for the team. It's all for Christ. Moses didn't have the strength in and of himself to keep his hands raised through the duration of the battle. So God supplied the strength he needed through the wisdom of others, Aaron and Ur, who brought him a rock to sit on and who then held up each of his hands. We need people who don't mind holding up our hands. We need support systems. We need the church. We need young people who understand that it's not about them. It's all about being a part of the body of Christ. That we support one another. We're there for one another. We sacrifice for one another. That's why Isaiah 40, 29 says, He gives strength to the weary and to him who lacks might. His increases power. But the key is that we wait upon God. Seeking his strength in times of weakness rather than relying upon our own feeble power. As David says in Psalm 73 verse 26. My flesh and my heart may fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. There will be times when we lack strength. To continue. Anybody ever felt like you lack strength to continue this journey? That's why I love the hymn, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, oh, oh, whether shall I go? We must believe God through Jesus the Christ empowered by the Holy Spirit to be our strength. He will enable us to continue on in righteousness and to do the good works which he has appointed for us. And he may supply others to help us. Don't miss that. It's all right, y'all, to ask for help. Please understand that within the body of Christ. It's all right for us to ask for help. But one way or another, he will give us the strength we need to do his will, his way, by his word. When we feel like giving in, giving up, God's strength will enable us to persevere. So as Israel was instructed through this very visible objective, object lesson, Perseverance is only possible by strength which God supplies. And in weakness, God makes strong. That's why in Romans chapter 15 verse 4, Paul tells them then and tells us today, for everything that was written in the past, in old times, referencing back to the Old Testament, was written to teach us. It was written for our learning. So that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement that provide us the hope in God through Jesus Christ. 
Exodus 17 taught them then, and I know we have Old Testament biblical advanced Bible studiers. But that was Old Testament 17, the occurrence of Moses being taught that it was God's strength, God's power that allowed him to persevere, to endure, and for the Israelites to have victory over the Amalekites. But today in the New Testament, it reminds us our strength, our perseverance come from the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As it was in the Old Testament, down through 42 generations, God sent his only begotten son down through the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The lineage of David through 40 and two generations conceived in the womb of a virgin called Mary by the Holy Spirit to show through Jesus the Christ God's presence to show through Jesus the Christ God's power to show through Jesus the Christ God's provision to show through Jesus the Christ God's perseverance to bring salvation eternal life to all who would come to believe in the one who went to a hill called Calvary persevering enduring the pain the persecution on an old rugged cross and I know there are some pastors and preachers today who believe you don't have to go by the cross but every time that you stand before God's people you have to tell them about Jesus going to a hill called Calvary he's the ultimate he embodies what God has sent him to do and that was to pay the penalty for sin is there anybody in the house uh, to endure uh, the judgment of God uh, while he was on that cross uh, between the sixth to the ninth hour uh, while he was hanging on that cross uh, bleeding suffering and dying uh, I'm glad uh, that Jesus persevered uh, I'm glad uh, that Jesus endured uh, just for you uh, and just for me uh, the Bible says they hung him high they stretched him wide but Jesus understood his mission was not to quit his mission was to persevere his mission was to pay the penalty that you and I could not pay and I'm glad that Jesus allowed them to raise him up. Is there anybody in the house? He says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw men, women, boys, and girls unto me. I'll draw black men. I'll draw black women. I'll draw white women. I'll draw white men. I'll draw Asians. I'll draw Latinos. I'll draw Mexicans. I'll draw Jews and Jews. Gentiles, lift me up. My death will draw. The love of God will draw. The mercy of God will draw. The grace of God will draw. And they lifted him high. But I thank God.
God that he didn't give up because love was on one side holding up his hands on that cross the love for his father the love for the one who were yet sinners that he came to die for I thank God that grace and mercy was on the other side holding up his hands on that cross he took on the wrath of God took on the judgment of God took on the condemnation of God and when he got finished he cried out tattlestai I paid it in full is there anybody in the house I paid the penalty for sin I've broken the dominion of sin and one of these old days those who will come to believe in me I'll deliver them from the presence of sin he kept on dying between the sixth to the ninth hour until he locked his head in his shoulder willingly gave up his life he didn't quit he didn't give up but he willingly gave up his life and Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus went to Pilate requested his dead body because it was prophesied that he would be buried in a rich man's new tomb they placed him in Joseph of Arimathea rich tomb where he stayed there all oh, Friday night stayed there persevering all oh, Saturday stayed there enduring all oh, Saturday night but I'm glad is there anybody in the house I'm so glad that God reached down raised him from the dead with all power resurrection power loving power forgiving power reconciliation power restoration power all power in his hands I know for some people that don't move you but for me who's born again for those who know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord I know it's like music in your ear but some people they say it don't take all of that why is he doing all of that because I'm so glad that Jesus raised from the dead giving every person an opportunity who would come to believe in him to be raised from sinful death and be regenerated made alive in Christ I'm so glad that God raised him from the dead early early Sunday morning he was raised from the dead with all power all power in his hands in heaven and in earth and I'm so glad he walked around for 40 days showing himself to the disciples and 500 or more proving that God's promise is absolutely true proving God's power is absolutely real he ascended to sit on the right hand throne of the Father and one of these old days I don't know when I don't know where I don't know what time but one thing I know the Bible says he's coming back again until then he's given every believer the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit to endure to persevere to persist to never give up and if you know what I'm talking about you ought to say amen amen praise his holy name how many people in the streaming congregation how many people in the pews how many people believe he's worthy if you believe he's worthy you ought to say hallelujah praise his holy name he's worthy he's worthy he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same he is worthy he is worthy he is worthy to be praised if you truly if you truly want a love trust obedient relationship with God through Jesus Christ 
that you may be able to persevere you may be able to be persistent and endure the hard times and the challenges that life will bring up then you need a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ empowered by the Holy Spirit that when those times come I will never say to you you will not feel like stress overwhelms you I'll never tell you you will not feel like giving up but let me just tell you what I will tell you the Bible says we walk by faith not by sight leaning and depending on the Lord who made the heavens and the earth I just want to invite you to come to believe in Jesus Christ the Bible says in Romans 10 9 if you confess with your mouth believe sincerely in your heart that Jesus the Christ is Lord and God has raised him from the dead you will be saved you shall be rescued from the penalty of sin you shall be rescued from the power of sin you shall be one day rescued from the presence of sin you can come down right now those in our streaming live congregation if you decide that you believe in Jesus Christ under the conviction and the converting and the compelling of the Holy Spirit you can call this number 324-2055 706-324-2055 and tell them that I believe in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. I confess my sins. I repent of my sins. I turn away. I invite him into my heart. Call that number right now. 706-324-2055 and if you're in the congregation in the pew, we invite you to come down and you say I believe in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. You can come right now. Maybe you're looking for a church home. And you said over these 15 months, I pray the Holy Spirit will lead me to a place that will lift up Jesus Christ, will preach truth, Christ-centered, Bible-based, Holy Spirit-led and mission-bound. I, I, I need to be in a place where I can grow in the will, the way, and the word of God. We invite you to come today, unashamed, unembarrassed, you can come in the streaming live congregation we invite you to come maybe you've been relocated here because of military reassignment maybe you've been relocated here because of a job relocation maybe you've been matriculating to one of the colleges the universities or community colleges or maybe one of the technical schools and you need a place where you can anchor where you can enter into fellowship where God can use you in a mighty way we invite you to come today unashamed not embarrassed all over this sanctuary don't don't allow Satan to keep you back because again we can be here today and gone today life is like a vapor here today gone tomorrow in the name of Jesus will you come unashamed not embarrassed Jesus loves you. He died just for you and for me. Will you come? You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you so very much. God bless you. We pray something has been shared to challenge you. We pray something has been shared to convict you. We pray that something has been shared that will encourage you to continue on in the name of Jesus the Christ. Persevere in spite of the challenges, the crisis, in spite of the hard times, that Jesus Christ may get the glory. God bless you. We want to continue in worship. We want to continue in worship by bringing the tithe and the offerings at this time. Those in the streaming live congregation, those who are here, we want to give you an opportunity. If you give and bring the tithe and offering online, we want to ask that you would just take your devices right now. Go to the Fourth Street Missionary Baptist Church. Go to the emblem, the crib, the cross, and the empty tomb. And you can bring your tithe and offerings right now in the name of Jesus. If you choose to drop it off, 
I pray that you had your envelope, your tithing envelope prepared and you see the tithing boxes outside and you had the opportunity to worship as you entered into the sanctuary by dropping off your tithe and offering in the drop the tithing boxes. If you did not drop them off coming in, then we want to ask if you would take an envelope, raise your hand from the ushers so the ushers can see you and they will give you a tithing envelope and you can go ahead and prepare your tithe and offering and as you exit the sanctuary then you can drop your envelope in the tithe boxes as you exit the sanctuary. Raise your, high, your hands high as they give you the envelopes. Please make sure you put your correct data on the envelope, your name, if anything has changed, telephone numbers, addresses and designate the appropriate amount of your tithe and your offerings and we thank God for you. If you want to drop them off during the week, you can drop them off at the Christian Education Office between the hours of 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can drop them off with the envelope that's provided by the ushers and the church. If you still want to mail them in, you, it's okay to mail them in. Take that provided envelope that the church has provided, put your designated information, update any changed information, and then designate your tithe and offering and mail it in by putting it in a, an addressed envelope, addressed to the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church, P.O. Box 1591, 1591, Columbus, Georgia, 319 zero one and mail it in we thank god for worshiping through the tithe and the offering we believe that god is a generous god jesus is a generous savior the holy spirit is a generous enabler helper and if we're connected with god through jesus christ then we too are obedient generous givers through the tithe and the offering God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. Dear gracious Father, we thank you for these who have worshipped in the pews, person to person. We thank, though, for though, we thank you for those who've worshipped through the virtual live streaming. We pray you will bless their lives. We thank you for their allegiance, their loyalty, and their willful obedience, their sacrifice unto you by bringing the tithe and the offering. We pray that you will bless their families, continue to bless them with health and strength. Provide for their every needs according to your riches and glory as you've promised. Help us to be entrusted as good stewards with that which is given. That we may continue to glorify you, magnify your name. It's in the precious and glorious name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you for worshiping. We ask that you would please continue to encourage others to come if they want to come person to person. But also to continue to connect with us. We will have deep sea fishing this evening at five o'clock to study. Dear Gracious Father, we thank you for the message. We pray it does not fall on stony ground, that it will not fall among thorns and thistles. It will not fall along the wayside, but it will penetrate someone's heart and mind to shift their mindset, to increase their faith, to know that it is in your strength It's in their weakness that you make them strong. Help us to persevere, not for ourselves, but for the cause of Christ. Now we ask that you would dismiss us from this place, but never, never from your grace. Never from your presence, your provision, your power, nor your protection. It's in the precious and glorious name of Jesus from whom all blessings flow. Let us all sing and all stand.
you all so very much for being here. We thank you for our guests for being here. We thank you for those of our guests in the live streaming congregation. Let me ask you to do this as we continue to protect one another. We're going to ask this section, if you would follow the usher, go outside the wall. Uh, if you're going outside the left exit, we're going to ask that you would give each other five to six feet distancing. Those will go down the hall, go down the wall and exit. We're going to ask the center section to follow the instruction of the ushers so that you can just exit going through the exit door. Thank you all so very much. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. And you on my right in the right section, we're going to ask you to go to your left and go down the wall as we practice five to six feet distancing. Remember to hug each other with the crossed hands crossing the hands there you go that means hug thank you all so very much for your cooperation thank you for your instruction power to all may god's blessings be upon you go in his power thank you um, thank you ensemble thank you all great job in worshiping thank you tandra thank you christopher thank you man thank you brother graham thank you antoine thank you god bless you all christopher thank you man Make sure you get your information in for baccalaureate Sunday so we can recognize you. Okay? Got it. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We pray that you were encouraged, inspired, and yes, even convicted to believe in Jesus the Christ as your personal Savior and Lord and that you will give Christ your life. We want you to know that he desires a love, trust, obedient relationship with you because he loves you. And we here at the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church love you too. We want you to know that here at the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church, you can come again and you can join us in worship, Bible study, and we also have other ministries through helping us to continue to grow in the will and the way of the Word of God through our virtual and through our Facebook Live and through Zoom. We want you to know that you can find out more about us at our website at the number four THST.org, the number four, THST.org. Or you can call us at 706-324-2055, 706-324-2055. We want you to know you're always welcome. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer.